Moochie 154. Man, it's great to have you here at uh, CUMR Street News, man. How you doing? Yes, sir. Everything been good, bro. Everything been good. 71 no. <laughs> 71 North, man. It's been hard. We've been trying to catch up to you for weeks. We finally got a hold of you, man. You know, this, this is awesome. You know, I had to come and bless it. You know what I'm saying? I had to come and represent that CUMR. You know what I'm saying? Right, I had to man. be there. CUMR. Now, what was it like growing up in Cleveland? And who is Moochie 154? Well, I don't know who, Big Moochie, who Moochie 154 is no more. It's Big Moochie now. You know what I'm saying? I didn't gain some weight over them years from the, from the Moochie days. So, but... You know, growing up over there, you know, I'm from Harvard, Harvard and Lee area, 154. So, you know, hey, over there, you know, it was, it was cool. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't have one of them stories like I, I grew up in the, in the hood and had to get it out the mud type thing. You know what I'm saying? I came up, both parents in the house. You know how we did. Outside, riding the bikes, playing down the man in the middle of the street, all that good stuff like that. So, right, right. About. Yeah, so you know back then, you know what I'm saying, we just came from a playful childhood and, and really just fun, you know what I'm saying, just have fun. There really wasn't no issues, nothing going on like, you know, in my community back then. Now we going with the 80s, you know, the late 70s to the 80s. So, you know so you know, we're just, just out here just doing a thing. That's back when we can go to the mall at the age of 14 and 13 and then have to worry about nobody snatching us. Yeah. Going to Randall, the turtle. Look, Randall Mall, <laughs> Randall Mall on the weekends, you know. Shoot. Yeah, that was our spot. Yeah. So, what was it like growing up in Cleveland? And, uh, well, no, that's the question. Well, now, what was the music scene like back in the day, and how did it influence your early career? Ooh, so, you talking about the music scene from when I was coming up, or what got me into the career? Well, you know, the music scene in Cleveland was always booming, you know what I'm saying? We had, you know, people like, of course, Suave Gotti, the Pink Gangster, you know what I'm saying? And we had people like TLC back then, and, man, it was, ooh, man, hold on, who else? Uh, Brothers for the Struggle. I know I'm missing a whole lot, because, you know, you just front the question on me, I didn't get time to think about it. But the music scene was, it was really popping, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, in our era, we still was transitioning from the dance, because I always was on, on the dancing side. So, you know what I'm saying? My, my peoples was like Heavy D and the Boys, you know, Big Daddy Kane, Special Ed, you know, all them type of cats, you know. So, anybody that had like, you know, the dance and, you know, the party feel. So, with me, as far as what I'm doing now, that just consists because like line dancing, we was born into it here in Cleveland. You know, ever since I... I knew we was line dancing. Transube Express, the JB's, Monorail, all the classics. So, you know, when I came back, after I went to the military, when I came back home, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to try something different. And that's how I came, you know what I'm saying? Linked up with Suave, of course, with the hype man on the music side. But then after that, you know, I just found my niche on my, on my lane, and I just stayed with it because I ain't no rapper. I don't rap, so, you know, my whole thing was dancing. I'm a, I'm a dancer, so pretty what, much. What, what humbled you, man, to be to be Suave Gotti's hype man back then, man? With all the talent that you, with all the talent that you had, man, what was it that would would allow you back in the, back in the day to be a hype man? Well, the thing was, is after I got out the military, you know, I moved to California. I was staying in California for a while, and ended up working with my man Repo Rick. You know, he had a little label called Repo. Um, Repo Records, and we was part of with Delicious Vinyl, with uh, you know who was on Delicious Vinyl back then, um, you know Tone Loaf, Young MC, The Far Side, all of them, and then uh, you know just being around them cats. But then we had a group called Deuce Deuce from Long Beach and Compton that was on uh, Delicious Vinyl, and they had a tour. We had a tour, I think it was like a thirty city tour with Bad Boy, and my man Cozy, you know, saying he's a big producer out there, produced for like Ice Cube and all of them. So he brought us on the tour with him. So while we going on the tour, they just asked me to be their hype man. I didn't know what the hell a hype man was. Man, mind you, my thing is dancing. My whole thing 
while I was out there, I'm trying to be a dancer on Soul Train or something like that. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, shit, I want to be an MC Hammer dancer, background dancer. That was my thing. But while we was on the road, they was like, man, you should be on Hype Man. I'm like, man, what the fuck is a Hype Man? And it was like, you know, basically, get the crowd hype, know all the lyrics, you know what I'm saying? Do the punch-ins and all that. <coughs> Excuse me. So while we was on the tour, I just picked it up, you know what I'm saying? In the band, practicing, rehearsing. Our first show, I believe, was in, uh, in Memphis, Tennessee. And uh, we get there. They're like, Mooch, go ahead. You know how to do it, man. Just go on up there. I go up on stage. Our first show was at a big arena in Memphis. Man, I got up on stage, man. There was like about 30,000 people there. I come in there, you know, with you throw your hands in the air and wave them like you just don't care. And if you're ready to rock with the deuce mob, everybody say, hell yeah. When I said that, the crowd went crazy. I said, oh, the stage is my life. I got to be on this stage. So, pre, we did the tour. But then after that, our last tour was in Chicago. And I'm like, man, I ain't been back home since I got out the military. So I'm like, you know what? Instead of going back to Cali, I'm going to go ahead and go back to Cleveland. Came back to Cleveland. You know, just doing my regular thing. You know, get a regular job. Bump into my partner, Suave, from school. You know, Suave. Come to find out Suave, one of the hottest freestyler rappers in the city. Go to one of his shows with him. And, you know, in Cleveland, it was like a lot of the artists, they was just basically performing solo. They ain't had no hype, man, none of that stuff like that. So, like, while we at the club, I see Suave get up on stage. You know what I'm saying? I go with him anyway. I'm at there. He on stage. He do his thing. And I'm like, no, nah, it needs some more juice to it. He was already killing it, but we had to add the spice to it. So then I said, Suave, I said, man, I got to be your hype, man. Let me go ahead and, and get this stuff pumped up and, and, you know what I'm saying, bag you up on it. And bam, we linked in, got the music together, started doing shows together. And that's that's pretty much the start. Then after that, I went to the club. This is back when Bells on the Circle was open. Go to the club, they playing stuff like the percolator, holes in his house, all that. And I'm like, man, I said, I've been hip to this shit for a minute. Oh, excuse my language. But I've been hip to this for a minute. You know what I'm saying? Because in the military, a lot of my people were from Chicago, Detroit, Miami. So... I was already hip to the house music. But then when I get to Cleveland, I'm hearing like percolator holes in this house. Man, this is like 94. Like, no, probably like 95. 95, 96. In that, around that era. And so then I'm sitting there, I'm like, I'm listening. I'm like, man, all he doing is saying the same thing over and over again through the record. It's time for the percolator. It's time for the percolator. Or it's some holes in this house. It's some holes. I'm like, man, I can make a record like that. Everybody doubted me. I hit up Swab. I said, Swab, man, I need to go to the studio. He hit me up with my man, Battleax, and, uh, with Strong Arm. I go over to the studio, and I'm going to keep it 100 with you. Nobody in the city wanted to do that music. I go to the studio, I'm like, man, I need to, like one of them house-type joints. Everybody talk about, man, we don't make that type of shit. People ain't going to rattle around bumping that in their trucks. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I ain't making it for the dudes. This is for the women. So my man, uh, Battleax, he was like, well, look, I'm going to show you how to work the board. You make your own beat because I don't want my name on it. That's how I started. So I sat there and I just put the beat in. Boom, 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 boom. A whole four minutes. Then after that, I said, I need some claps. So he found some claps on the sound. Put the headphones back on. He pushed record. The regular bass playing. I just started adding the claps in. Clap, clap, clap. After that, I go to the studio, go into the booth. He's like, what you gonna say? I said, I got this. And that's when I came out with that. Let me see that booty bounce. Let me see that booty bounce. He put them suckers on different keys, edited, cut it up. So now I got the headphones on and it's boom, boom. So let me see that booty bounce. Let me see that booty bounce. Bounce, bounce, bounce. Played track by track the whole like four and a half minutes. And after that, man, I was done. I was just playing around with it. We recorded it, put it on the CD. I just took it to the club. I said, man, when you play that hoes in this house, oh, thank my man DJ Centipede. I said, when you play that hoes in the house, percolator, throw this on. He mixed it in. History was born. And that's the whole thing how it started. Uh, give us some examples, man, of some music lessons that you've learned through experience, man, uh, you know, being in the uh, industry. Just as, as far as well, you know, more be, we, know, we know you used to be on a Cleveland record label when you first started. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, and I know there's certain things you went through then, and with all the BS I went through. Oh man, yeah. What would be some <laughs> of the lessons that you learned by saying, "Okay, here's what I learned by this example." Oh, okay. I can tell y'all a whole lot. One, don't mess with nobody who don't know what you're trying to do. That's number one. You know what I'm saying? One, don't ask. I tell people all the time, even to this day, don't ask for advice from some person who never did what advice you're trying to look for. You know what I'm saying? That's where a lot of people mess up. So, like, say, for instance, if you never put a record out, why would I come to you and ask you, man, how should I put this record out? You have no experience. So why would I get advice from somebody who don't have experience? But um, the deals, the stuff I went through, like I said, at first with, with strong arm, you know what I'm saying, they my dudes. But, you know, on the business side, it was kind of crazy because at first, remember I said, they ain't want their name on the track. They used to be with a group of folks strong arm, though. No? Who? Remember, what was it? Uh, uh, what was that label? I wasn't never on no label until no, before the, then. The ones that somebody did, somebody get like... Sixty-five thousand or something from that's there. after strong arm. Oh, that was after strong arm. Yeah, that's after. Oh, okay. That's yeah, after. Go ahead, then. Well, I, I can tell you that one. That oh, you talking about uh, 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 critical music, right? <clears throat> so starting off with strong arm, back like you know what I'm saying. I got a bless battle axe and jazz mark big ed. You know what I'm saying because without them, the song like booty bounce and the original Cleveland shuffle wouldn't even been done because that's the studio I recorded in. Mm-hmm. But the thing was is that. One they ain't want their music, they name on the label. I mean, you know, on the CD. Cause mind you, I wasn't trying to be in the music business. I never thought about being. I was just playing around because I just wanted to make a song, just to tell people like I could do the same thing everybody else doing. That was the whole beginning. Like I wasn't like, you don't hear no story like, man, I've been rapping there since I was five years old or six years old. Man, this has been my dream. Man, this was just something I was just playing around doing, and it just ended up blowing up. But from Strong Arm and them, when I was with them. After the thing blew up, you know what I'm saying? People, I guess they really wasn't expecting the house music, the, the booty bounce, or the Cleveland Shuffle, the line dance really to take off the way it did. Because that bitch was bumping. Because when it, when it took off. Little hoes was bouncing booty all over Cleveland, <laughs> all sides, all over. I'm telling you, man. But it was like with the CD process. Mind you, this is 96, more than 97. So this is really the transition point from tapes, from the cassette tapes to CDs. It wasn't really too many people in Cleveland burning CDs at the time. So, like, 100 CDs back then to get pressed up was, like, almost, like, $300 just to get your CDs burnt because there was only a handful of people that did it. I did that. We had to do the inserts and all that. I went and made relationships with the stores like Kermit, downtown. This is when downtown music was still bumping. You had Nicky's. You had... Uh, Crazy D, Duck Oil's over at Joy Music. Um, it was so many. But I'm going.